Hi everyone, Crazy Eddie here, finishing my spotorial of Flaxbeard's Wondrous Steam mod here at Marriott Heights High School, as rendered by Throcky1380 with part 3, Tools and Armor. Let's get on with it. We have our basic sets of tools and armor here with brass and gilded iron, both made in typical fashion. Gilded armor is much brighter in color, is as strong as iron, and enchants like gold. Brass is more effective, but not as durable. But enough about those. Here's the armor you're really wondering about. The Steam Exosuit. By itself, it's quite useless, and will even slow you down if you don't have it charged with steam. But put it on and you're styling in steampunk fashion. Sorry, that's not very Victorian, is it? Don these garments, my friend, and you'll be better on bacon. Now, to make this armor useful, you'll need the engineering table, with which you customize many of the better flax beard tools. Place the item you want to customize into the handy slot, and a whole new GUI opens up for you. You can add plates for protection. All of them give the same protection as iron armor, but they have different effects, like this plate, which may teleport enemies when they hit you. You can also add better specific protections, V discounts for Thongcraft, life points for blood magic when you take damage. There's a lot of mod support here, and it's sure to get even better. Of course there's more, but to use most of it you need to be able to store steam in your suit with a steam tank. Once you're all kitted out, you'll want to charge your suit and that's what this charging stand is for. Supply it with steam and just stand on it while wearing your armor. Next, we're going to cover some miscellaneous items. First, there's the Survivalist Toolkit. Its purpose is to protect your valuable tools by not allowing you to use them when their durability is down to one. However, It doesn't seem to work in this version of Flaxbeard's. This may be changed later, but I advise you test it on a cheap tool before you rely on it to protect your Efficiency 4 Diamond Pickaxe with Silk Touch. Next, there's the Tinker's Goggles and the Tinker's Monocle. Eye protection is important after all. They also have four zoom levels when you press Z. When you're young and you don't know where to go to, you can at least go in style with the top hat and the entrepreneur's top hat. The top hat is purely decorative, although it does provide a little protection. Putting on the Ritz. The Entrepreneur's Top Hat provides you with better deals when dealing with villagers, and apparently gets better with use. When you cook meat in a furnace with a steam heater, you get steamed versions of the regular meats. They give an extra point of food and an extra half a point of saturation. Also, it has absolutely no carbs. Then there's the canister.
According to esteemed innovation, crafting any item with it makes it indestructible. I haven't tested to see what it means by indestructible. But here's what a canistered item looks like. Canistered items can be used normally. Now let's talk about steam powered tools. Here we have the steam drill. Right click to spin up the tool and then left click to use it normally. We have a steam drill. A steam shovel. Oh, that's the saw. Here's the shovel. And the steam saw. As you see, they're about the same speed as iron tools, but they use steam instead of wearing out. Now we can talk about weapons. We'll start with the flintlock pistol. It's smaller and quicker than their bigger brothers, but less damaging. All of Flaxbeard's guns use musket cartridges, so you don't need separate ammo. It takes a fair amount of time to reload, so it may not be useful in a target-rich environment. But like all of Flaxbeard's guns, it makes a very satisfying boom. If you want it to load faster, you can attach a breech loader to it. All Flaxbeard weapons take only one upgrade at a time. You can also make your pistol a six shooter. It takes a while to load, but then you have six shots. If you're in the nether and you want to shoot a zombie pig man without angering the rest of them, the makeshift suppressor is said to accomplish that. Interesting. It kept the six shots I loaded when it was a revolver. Next, we have the blunderbuss. It's your basic shotgun. It does a lot of damage up close. It takes about a week to load. And it has quite a kick. You can reduce that kick with a recoil pad. Or you can give it flame aspect with a blaze barrel.
Or you can reduce your load time with a bolt action. If you crave a little more accuracy, you can make a flintlock musket. Adding a blaze barrel or a bolt action gets the same results as for a blunderbuss. Then there's the spyglass. By itself it's pretty handy. Right click zooms in, left click zooms out. Sorry about the motion sickness. But you can attach it to your musket and do some sniping. Then there's this baby, the rocket launcher. We're gonna take this one outside. It takes about as long to load as you might expect, but note, it loads four shots at a time. The streamlined barrel makes the missiles fly faster. And the extended magazine allows you to load six rockets instead of four. That's a lot of bang for your buck. For reasons unknown, I was unable to load the other rocket types, but the normal one still gives plenty of firepower. which leaves me with just the airstrike conversion kit to demonstrate. The name makes you think of parabolic arcs, but what it really gives you is... Extra high rocket jumps! Use with caution. So here we are, folks. Blackspear's Wondrous Steam Mod in three parts. If you found it useful, please click like on all three videos. And don't forget to check out my other videos. And also, don't forget to have some fun, build something cool, and have a nice day. Here's an important note. The canister book despawned with everything else, so it's not a replacement for a gravestone.